Just about everybody was a Michael Jordan fan in the 80s and 90s. He elevated basketball like no one else, soaring through the air, hitting impossible jumpers, and leading his Chicago Bulls to six NBA championships. But in the years since he left his playing days behind, stories have emerged of a man prone to a toxic competitive streak to both opponents and teammates. In this video, we'll highlight some players who are decidedly not riding the Jordan train. Without any further delay, let's get into it. Starting off, let's talk about Charles Barkley's relationship with Michael Jordan. NBA stars Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley were just as likely to be seen on a fancy golf course in the early 1990s as they were on the court. Before Game 4 of the 1993 NBA Finals, Jordan of Chicago Bulls and Barkley of Phoenix Suns got together for a few rounds of golf. They were supposed to be friends. The late Bulls assistant coach Johnny Bach told a story about how Jordan then gave Barkley a $20,000 diamond earring. Why? It wasn't kind or helpful. Instead, it was a cold, calculated move. Jordan must have thought that the act would make Barkley feel so good about his pal that he would back off on the court. In fact, Jordan scored 55 points in Game 4, while Barkley and the rest of the Suns team seemed to ignore him. Barkley later answered, and he did it in a public and effective way. Barkley was a member of the Loud panel on TNT's Inside the NBA. In 2012, he used that platform to criticize Michael Jordan for giving too many unqualified friends jobs in the front office of the Charlotte Bobcats, which he was the main owner of. Barkley said that Jordan ended their friendship because of these comments, not because of anything bad Barkley did. Next up, let's talk about how Clyde the Glide couldn't let it slide with Michael Jordan. The Dream Team, which won a gold medal in basketball at the 1992 Summer Olympics, lived up to its name. It had so much talent on its team, including Carl Malone, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and Michael Jordan, and also Hall of Famers like Chris Mullen and Scottie Pippen ended up sitting on the bench. Of course, not every NBA star from the early 1990s could make the Dream Team, but Isaiah Thomas, a star for the Detroit Pistons and a key member of the Bad Boys teams that won back-to-back -back titles for the Motor City, was notably left off. Michael Jordan kept him off the team because he was upset about how often the Bulls lost in the playoffs to the Pistons and had the power to do so. In the book Dream Team by sports writer Jack McCallum, Dream Team member Clyde Drexler made fun of Jordan. Drexler said he didn't think Jordan wanted to play with Isaiah, two titles in a row, and he was always an all-star. And Isaiah can't make it? He added that he didn't like that, and that it's not up to them to decide. It's about who should be there. I don't think he highlighted that he doesn't care if you don't like him, but what's most important is that you both want to win. No doubts, he shouldn't make you like him, but when one player can leave out another player, they no longer have control over the system. Then there's the time when Parrish thought Michael Jordan's a jerk. Robert Parrish, who is in the Basketball Hall of Fame, never seemed to have a problem with anyone, or if he did, he kept it to himself. After all, this player was so serious and calm that a teammate called him the chief, after a character in the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, who was also quiet. So, if a player made him mad, it was because he was really mad. In the 1980s, Parrish was part of the legendary Big Three for the Boston Celtics, along with Larry Bird and Kevin McHale. He finished his career with the Chicago Bulls in 1996-97. That year, the team won the NBA championship. Michael Jordan had to play with Parrish. Parrish told ESPN in 2012 that Jordan yelled at him hard after one of his first Bulls practices because he messed up a play. What about Bill Cartwright? It's more like Bill Cart wronged by Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan seems like he could be a jerk, but he was loyal to the people who made him happy. Charles Oakley became one of Michael Jordan's best friends and allies in the NBA after both of them joined the Bulls in the mid-1980s. In the end, Jordan and Oakley didn't get to be BBFFs. That means basketball best friends forever. They only played together for three seasons before the Bulls traded Oakley to the New York Knicks for center Bill Cartwright. Jordan treated Cartwright like he was his mom's new boyfriend, like a kid whose parents had just split up. David Halberstam's book, Playing for Keeps, Michael Jordan and the World He Made, highlighted that Jordan tried to hurt Cartwright by sending him bad passes on purpose during practices so that the new player would look clumsy and not very good. Even worse, Jordan called Cartwright Medical Bill, which is not a very clever name, because he had been brave enough to get hurt in the past. But Jordan did eventually say sorry, and he did so in writing. Jordan wrote in the coffee table book, For the Love of the Game, My Story, I was wrong about the trade between Charles Oakley and Bill Cartwright. I liked having Charles on the team, but Bill was the one who really made a difference. Michael Jordan didn't win any championships with Charles Oakley, but he did win three with Bill Cartwright on the court. Next up, let's talk about a violent occurrence relationship with Michael Jordan. Steve Kerr is now one of the best coaches in the NBA. He has helped the Golden State Warriors win three NBA championships. Kerr is better known as a coach than as a player, but he did win two rings with the San Antonio Spurs and three rings as a backup guard for the Chicago Bulls in the 1990s. Michael Jordan, a teammate, was probably the toughest person he had ever played against. Jordan took a nearly two-year break from the NBA to play baseball. When he came back to the Bulls' 1995 training camp, he was just as driven 
ribbon as he had been before. Kerr told Vice Sports that camp was crazy because of how competitive and tough it was, and that Jordan got mad at him when he guarded him during a practice game. Michael was just being very physical, Kerr said. But after coach Phil Jackson left for a minute, Jordan got more aggressive and started talking trash. At some point, Jordan's constant bad attitude and hard fouls got to be too much for Kerr. He started talking back, and after that, he started to foul Jordan too. After they bumped elbows, Jordan lost it. Kerr joked that it was like when the Velociraptor attacked the kid in Jurassic Park. Michael Jordan sent an apology message to the answering machine, and Kerr said everything was fine after that. By fighting him, he thinks he showed that he was tough and that he wouldn't back down, and he also thinks he respected that. At least they seem to have made up, which is good. Did Michael Jordan ruin Muggsy Bogues? Michael Jordan came back to the NBA in 1995 after a two-year break, during which he tried to make it as a professional baseball player, but failed. He wanted to make up for lost time and prove something. When the Bulls played the Charlotte Hornets in the first round of the playoffs that year, Jordan seemed to focus a lot of his psychic energy on one player. Later, in Game 4, when the score was tied, the ball was in Tyrone Muggsy Bogues' hands. Bogues was one of the most exciting NBA players to watch for a long time. This was partly because he was one of the smallest players to ever make it into the NBA, but he was so quick and agile that his height didn't matter. But then Jordan messed it all up. Bogues highlighted that while Jordan was guarding him, his airness said, shoot it, you f and added some bad word for short person. Bogues missed that shot because he was scared, and the Hornets lost. According to a widely shared collection of Bach stories, Bogues later told Bulls assistant coach Johnny Bach that Michael Jordan's trash talk ruined his game for good and caused his stats to drop. Wrapping it up, let's talk about how Michael Jordan wasn't a dream for Kareem. Most of the players have seen Michael Jordan's cold and sometimes cruel drive to win go wild. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was one of a few players who could challenge Jordan for the title of greatest basketball player of all time. He finished his career Career around the time Jordan's was starting, so their teams didn't play each other that often. But he still has a reason for not liking Air Jordan, and in particular, Jordan's Air Jordans. Abdul Jabbar said at a national public radio event in 2015 that he was disappointed that the politically apolitical Michael Jordan not only missed his chance to make a real difference as a well known public figure, but also chose to make money over making a difference. That concludes today's video. If you found the video helpful, please do consider giving us a thumbs up, and don't forget to share the video with your friends and family. Family. See you next time.